What is up, you guys? We are back with Behind the Bikini, and we've got a whole crew today for episode 39. Um, we decided to do something a little bit different this time. Uh, brought on Drew and brought on Addison. And the reason why we're doing this is because we thought, you know, we've got a lot of you guys out there that are relatively new at competing and things like that. And Addison just competed in her very first show. So we thought we'd bring her on and get perspective from a brand new competitor. What made her decide to do this? What direction she went? Why she went that way? And brought on her coach, Drew, since we got him right here. Um, and figured we could do the whole the whole nine yards and kind of give you an A to B kind of thing um, if you are starting in the sport and some things to think about, questions to ask all of that but before we do that like comment subscribe all the fun things that we always have to do so hit the buttons all the wherever the buttons are right now <laughs> like wherever the buttons are so um so thank you for joining us i know we just kind of threw this together last minute too so i'm glad that we were all, all able to get on at the same time that's it's fantastic so um so addison tell me um tell me a little bit about just yourself and just in general like age you know give me your social security number <laughs> you know <laughs> very broad but um yeah, hi yeah, my yeah. name is addison i just turned 23 in april i graduated college in may from uf i majored in architecture and i started bodybuilding basically like right after i graduated um and basically i've just been living life trying to figure things out post-grad and yeah so and you're a great artist. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I paint. Uh, I have like a, a little thing back there. There you go. There you go. So you guys, um, do you guys know her? You can kind of, kind of feed. Yeah. Her you can help me out. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough when you're brand new at this. You know what I mean? So I leave some gaps. Yeah. No. i I'm starting, or I started my own business painting. So I customize like champagne bottles has been like my recent thing. Um, but I also do like shoes and really anything. Pet portraits. Oh, cool. Yeah. Fair. So That's for those of you that have seen the wine bottle with my two dogs on it that I got yeah. as a gift, Addison is the one. That okay. Created. Okay. Okay. I was going to ask you if it, if it was your beats, your blinged out beats, if she did those. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's next, but that's not yeah, right. yeah, yeah, true. Different. <laughs> Very different. So, um, so, okay. So were you an athlete growing up or was this just something you did when you started um, to get out of college? I did a bunch of sports growing up, but mainly in college or in high school, I did lacrosse and cheer. So I also did like competitive cheer in seventh and eighth grade. Okay. Um, that was not my thing. And then I don't know why it continued in through high school, but it did. And then lacrosse was cool. Um, and then like growing up, I played soccer and stuff, but I was never like really good at it. <laughs> I was like, I played field hockey and I was never really good at it. Oh, that was me. <laughs> I was like, I played, I was there. <laughs> I was, like, exactly. Sat the bench a lot, but I was there. <laughs> Volleyball too was a thing at one point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, and you, and you competed in figure, right? Yeah. So I started in figure myself because everybody always told me I had volleyball short shoulders. Everybody always told me okay. I had the, 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 from I don't know. I was yeah, people swimmer. always ask me if I was like a swimmer. Me, same. Everybody, I, ju I just said that. I was like, I was a swimmer since I was a kid. Like, little, yeah. little. The first thing I ever did was swimming. So yeah. that, built, that builds you your figure frame for those of you out there that don't know. <laughs> I never swam, but people would ask me if I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the swimmer's shoulders. It's the shoulders. Yeah. It's the shoulders. So <laughs> um, so what made you decide to go with figure? What was it that, that made you go that direction? Honestly, when I met Drew, I just asked him. I like just had him look at my physique because – I don't know. I don't have the vision that he does. Yeah. So I was like, he just threw me in some poses and then was like, yeah, your figure. And I was like, yes, I want a lot spread on stage. <laughs> so, so there you go. So there's your question for you, Drew. So what, what was it that made you decide to push her to figure versus, you know, bikini or wellness or whatever? Yeah. And I think this is something that's really important for, for first time athletes to kind of grasp. And ironically, uh, Sandy and I had a call yesterday because she just you know, she's so in tune with what's going on with the sport and always wants feedback from from us coaches with mm -hmm. some of the numbers that we saw this last weekend and going into junior nationals. And I just told her there's a lot of, you know, misinformation out there on the classes and the divisions and what girls should or shouldn't have to be successful in a division. And, you know, figures a structure thing. A wellness is a structure thing. Um, you know, so really looking at the, the athletes, you know, with of her, their clavicles and whatnot, are the, you know, how's their waist come in and then quad sweep for figure, you know, she is, you know, it, she is figure, you know, up and down her structure. Um, uh, Addie is choosing to be a natural athlete, mm -hmm. uh, which I admire, um, appreciate. She's grinded so hard um, in her off season, in her prep. And that's a conversation we did 
in between prejudging and finals at Junior USA's, we did like throw her, hey, try to hit a bikini front post because <laughs> she's got really like bubbly projected like 3D glutes. Yeah. But like. She's got a back. She's got yeah. a back. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those that, you know, if she wants, you know, if she wants to stay natural and things like that and continue to evolve, you know, we, we're, Jean and I are having some conversations, like maybe see how she looks in a bikini pose, but yes. we're a little too big for bikini right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's also kind of being where your feet are too, because it was the same thing with me. I mean, I went pro figure. Now on the pro stage, there's no way in hell I could be figure. It's just, just not, not possible. But if I was still an amateur, I would still be, I would still be figure. I, that would still be my my division, you know, just because, again, I've got the back just like you. I've got the swimmer shoulders. i got the back. I don't have the big round bubbly glutes that you'd see in bikini. You know, it's different. It's a different structure. So, you know, as you progress, like Drew was just saying, you have to make that decision once you get to the next level. Like, which direction do we go? Which direction mm -hmm. we take this? So there's not always the right answer. And like you said, the misinformation aspect of it, people don't realize, like, looking at pros is not the same as getting on a local level stage. It's just not, it's just not. And I try to tell people, I'm like, that's why, like, when, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I do a consultation, I ask the girl, like, what is your ultimate goal? Do you want to just stay on the local level and just compete, you know, here? Or do you want to go to nationals? Do you want to go pro? Because all of that's going to determine what direction we take your physique, you know? Mm -hmm. So Addie, what is your, what is your ultimate goal here with this? Do you know, or do, are you just having fun with it? That's right a great now? question. I'm literally, yeah, I'm thinking about it every day. Yeah. trying to figure it out so yeah. we know where to move forward from here okay did so you just did your first show do you have another one that you have on the on the books or are you just kind of seeing where your body's gonna so go junior nationals was my second show oh okay 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 so I junior, did junior usa, USA. Or, yeah yeah my bad junior it's okay we get, we get them all mixed up too it's okay yeah. <laughs> so i did uh girl power and then i just extended right the, okay okay weeks or whatever that was okay yeah and what was the feedback when you came out of Junior USA's? They Basic loved, grow. Yep. They loved everything, you know, and that's the hard part. It's like the judges like, this is what we want to see for NPC figure, you know, consistently. Yes. And yes. it's just, we just, we just need to grow. You know, it's, she's, she's young. Um, yes. She's got great tissue for her age, but we just need more of her. But Sandy, you know, Joe, they, they loved her conditioning, her look, her, her I mean, her posing is beautiful. Um, absolutely beautiful and she's so captivating on stage so they're like we love her we just we need just need more of her, more so of her. that's that's the plan well you know that's something too like I know I know when I watch these shows if you have the presence on stage especially in a figure you're gonna go you're gonna go pretty far because a lot of figure girls don't know how to pose and don't know how to walk and don't know how to move don't know how to do any of that stuff so if you've got that part of it you're already like a step ahead of, of everybody I this is that. where cheerleading work to your day. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent. Cause I, you know, growing up myself, I was, I was always on stage. I was in the musicals and dramas and all that kind of stuff. I was an actress, all that kind of thing. And that absolutely helps you when you get on stage hundred percent, especially, like I said, especially a figure. Cause not a lot of the girls know how to walk, even walk in heels, mm -hmm. you know? So, <laughs> um, so are you going into, so you're just kind of seeing where you're going, where your body's going to go right now. So are you doing like a grow phase right now? So what, or what are you planning on? I think we're reversing and then probably just going into a growth phase. Yeah. We're going to see what's going to happen with some of the natural stuff. You know, Tyler's, you know, okay. saying there's, we might get some natural shows, uh, pro qualifier in May. We'll see how she holds composition, potentially Ben Weeder. Um, okay. So we're being really aggressive right now with food post junior essays. We're only what, four days post show. Yeah. 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 So, um, we're being very aggressive with food and training right now to get a nice rebound response out of her um, and keeping her tight. She looked great yesterday. She checked in. Um, still has like all her quad lines, glute line. Like she looks, she looks great. If she wanted to jump in that, I, I consider putting her in that class show um, just this weekend just to do it. But um, yeah. it's the end goal for her. So we're going to try to grow and then we'll evaluate her body comp and kind of where life's taking her um, and, and look at either Ben Weeder or maybe uh, that pro qualifier. And I think May they're thinking about putting one. Okay. And how are you feeling overall as far as like just your overall mental, physical health right now? How do you feel? Right now? Uh, right now, my energy is phenomenal. It's like the best it's been. In you, got, you got food, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I just like get so easily overstimulated with things like during prep. And I don't know if it's just like the increase in food or like what it is, but I feel like I'm able to, like I went to the gym and listened to like hard style music, which I mm -hmm. haven't been able to do. Like I normally, I listen to like a podcast or something like that kind of is something I can focus on. Cause if it's too much, then 
so I don't know. The energy has just been great, and I feel like really good with everything. Yeah. So. But it's probably the food. <laughs> we all get we all get that post show high, you know what I mean. So it's a, it's it, and the first few weeks out of the show can be a lot of fun too. The hardest part, I think, is the hunger cues and just trying to manage that and all of that. Yeah. But, you, but like Drew was saying, I mean, you can really maximize your great your gains coming out of a show too. So, um, <clears throat> so as you move forward here, goals to grow, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, hey, if you do Ben Weeder, I'll be there because I'm I'm at that show every year. So I'll. I'll I'll judge you. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> I'll give you critiques. So I don't judge. Uh, I, don't, I, I give the judges a lot of credit because I did that for a while and it's just a pain in the ass sitting at that table all day long. It's really, really hard to do. <laughs> so, um, so Drew, what is your, what is your thought process as far as, you know, um, when you were bringing her into the show, how long was the prep? How long was all of that? Did you, did you take her through a building phase first and then go into a prep or what was the, what was the process with her? Yeah, so kind of the full crash course story is um, I consulted with Addie and her mother um, okay. in Masters Nationals. I was in Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, so we got we got started uh, that weekend of Masters Nationals. Uh, we grew all of last year, um, and then she started prep January. Um, dieted her down. We had a really smooth what – I, what, I, what I think is a very smooth prep um, until ultra – Weekend. <laughs> Girl, five weeks out. Yeah, I've, I've heard the, I've heard bits and pieces of the story. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it is funny because I considered trying to throw her into Clash that March twenty eighth Clash show, oh. but she was at Ultra the weekend before, and, and ultimately it just didn't work um, with her and her schedule and timelines. And um, but it was a really smooth prep up until then, and then I think just that that weekend was the catalyst for her that just like really put her behind on energy balance. Okay. Um, cause things were really starting to ramp up and then she was on her feet for four days straight. Um, head banging with cucumbers in her hand. Yeah. But cucumbers. Listen, like, <laughs> she brought all her food into like, she was that person eating asparagus and like, I went, I went through the ADA entrance so I could have food. That's too funny. I went to the, I went to the ultra like years ago, long, long time ago before I was ever in the bodybuilding world. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is like, you know, it can be done. Right? Yeah. Like, uh -huh. it, are you yeah. going to pay for it? Yeah. I mean, she did. Yeah. But, like, yeah. you don't have to be a hermit the entire time and lock yourself in your room. Right. Yeah. And I think that was cool for Addie to kind of learn and go through, too, because mm -hmm. she's got a lot of, you know, friends that, you know, are heavy, like social media influencers and things like that. And there's one mm -hmm. thing to be what I call like influencer lean and body comp, and then another yeah. thing to be stage lean body comp. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, that's like that four to six week extra push. Right. Yep. So I think that was cool for her to like really learn and and, and absorb um, yeah. and learn from. Yeah. 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 Being there, I would get like comments from everyone like, wow, this girl's locked in. Like, and I'm in, in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm on prep. Like, this is how it's, how it's supposed to be. And they're like, yeah. no, you're insane. Like, <laughs> I'm like yeah, because they open the fridge and they're like, you brought all this chicken. And I'm like, yeah. That, that's what my body's used to eating. I'm going to eat the same exact yeah. chicken I've been eating. Yeah. So, well, yeah. It, it's almost like when, when you've been in prep for a little while, too, it's it's easier because you already know what is going to make your body respond well. So you know what you're taking with you. Like, I said that, you know, I was just at Pittsburgh and New York the last two weeks and I brought my food with me, but it's not what I'm used to at home still. And I was just like, I, my digestion was all off for the last couple of weeks. You know, yeah. if, I'd been, if I'd been in prep for a little bit longer, I probably would have had myself a little bit better prepared for that. So it's almost like because you were, you know, five, six weeks out or whatever, you'd already been in the groove for a while. So it's easier to do it. I find that to be the case in general. Like I find like when you're first starting out prep, you still feel a little bumpy and rocky. And then once you get into it for a couple of months, you start hitting a groove and it just becomes easy. You know what I mean? It's just what you do. Did yeah. you feel that? Did you feel that way your first time through here? I was going to say it was pretty like really smooth from the get go because I yeah. was so st strict on myself in my off season where my off season, I called it my prep before my prep. Like yeah. I was doing all the things. And so in my head, when I started prep, I thought of it as this big daunting thing. Like immediately I'm going to be exhausted and heart like hungry and starving and all these like things. And then I started prep and I was like, wait, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I was literally fine until that six weeks because even like at 10 or eight weeks i was like i i'm i feel good drew like is that yeah. okay like well <laughs> but i think and i think sean jay we should both we should all talk about this like oh, how many times we get you know athletes that want to consult and just jump right into prep yeah. and we all know how that goes as coaches yeah. and it's hard to then take a, a true novice athlete because like they don't know if they like this 
You know, right. Maddie's like, she was very vocal with me in the beginning and, and her mom, like, she's like, I want to try it. It's something it's the kind of, I wanted to do, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and it's just hard because if we don't take that time, then that prep is so much harder. So it's yeah. a double-edged sword, right? Because yeah. then maybe the experience isn't as enjoyable for athletes. Mm -hmm. So it's just something, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's why you had such a smooth prep, right? Because we were set up for success. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it also into, causes a lot of first timers too that just pop into a prep metabolically. They're just in such a terrible ready. spot and they don't Absolutely. realize that, but the coach is just willing to accept them for the money. Mm -hmm. And then they have a terrible experience. That's when three weeks into the prep, they're already very low on energy and they don't understand what's happening because they didn't put that time in up front. And now mm -hmm. that person's never coming back to the sport. And they would have had a completely different experience if they just put in four to six months of. Of, of a dieting in a building yep. phase. Yep. And I think that's a big thing too, that, that I know that has, has become a thing in the last few years. We've talked about this before, Jordan, because it used to be when I started, like, that's what you did. You hired a coach for a prep and you hired a coach for an off season. And that's just what you did. Like most people didn't even hire coaches for off season. It was usually just prep. You, you, you got a prep program and that was it. There was no, there was no making sure that you're ready for prep. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, yeah, okay, let's go. There's a, there's a show in 12 weeks. We'll be right. And we'll just diet you down to nothing in order to do that. So um, I was going to say that. I was like, one of the things that made it easier for you, Addie, that unknowingly to you, is the fact that you came into this in an off-season mode where you're just mm -hmm. trying to figure out what your body is capable of doing first. That's not how it used to be for a long time, for a long, long time. So you started off on the right foot, <laughs> basically. So for those new people that are out there listening, make sure that you get with a coach that's willing to work with you on that, you know? Um, and be, and as a athlete, you have to be flexible too. Like you said, you don't even know if you, if you were going to like this and you wanted to do this, you know? Um, a lot of times athletes come into this thinking or just people in general come into this thinking I'm going to be on stage in 12 weeks, you know, versus, and they just think they can just do that. And that it, it doesn't, it just doesn't work like that. It just mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. At least, at least to have the best experience possible, you know? So, you know, I, I do like the way that we do our consultations in that, you know, most of the time when I talk to um, girls now on the phone and stuff like that, they're, they're most of the time they're like, I'm going to get on stage when my body's ready to get on stage. Right. So I think there's been a mental flip when it comes to that. Um, and again, that was not the case even just five years ago. And there's still several coaches out there that that's all they do. They just like, okay, we're in a prep program now. That's, that's it, you know? So, but in reality, you actually need, like you said, more tissue. You need to grow more. You need to make sure that your metabolism is a good, in a good spot to even start cutting anything in the, in the first place, you know? Um, I, saw, I have a girl now that she just started with me a couple of months ago. We just started reworking her, um, her macros a little bit and her body's responding really, really well. And she's before me, she was with a coach for two years and that coach just kept telling her, well, we'll get off stage when your body's ready. She's like, well, can, can you tell me when that's going to be <laughs> like, can you give me an idea? And he just wouldn't give her an idea. I don't think he really knew what he was looking at. Um, you know, I just had a conversation with this week. I said, your body's responding really, really well. Now we've got the training under, under control. We've got the macros in the right spot. I said, I really think you could get on stage by the end of the year. And she's like, really? You think I can? Like, you really think that's possible? Said, yeah, it's absolutely possible. You know, we take a few more months to get some more tissue on you and get you on stage, you know? So you, you, you have to have that, that balance of, um, okay, we, we need to recomp the body. We need to make sure that you're in a good spot, but we also need to have a long-term goal to get to as well. So I like the fact that you guys are already planning for like next year at this point, even though you're right here, because that keeps you dialed in right now, knowing that you have that goal to get to, whether it's Ben Weeder or whether it's, you know, one of the nat natural shows in May or something like that next year, that kind of thing. So, um, and so I think this is a good segue because I really want her to talk about you know, we, we talked about all this preparation, right? Addie yeah. went through, you know, six months of this growing phase and obviously she had a great coach and obviously we know how much of a planner Drew is and everything. Yeah. But Addie, your first show day experience was tough. And <laughs> I really want you to talk about that. You know, maybe, you know, you, you go through all this preparation and then we get to that show and it kind of felt wild, right? So yeah. I wanted to kind of share about your first show day experience and, you know, maybe where you felt like, um, you could have been maybe felt even more prepared or what you would have done differently and kind of tell us about that. You know, your first show experience, you show up, you have no clue what to expect and boom, what does that feel like? Well, for my show day experience specifically, it was very rushed. So I'll start off by saying I should have gotten there Thursday night because <laughs> uh, I got there what Friday night, like right before check-ins. Uh, right. Yeah. And so right off the bat, I was like, 
on my feet, moving, like going through the motions. And then it was like, tan, 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 like layer, 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 check in, eat, check in, eat. Like I did not, I I heard all these stories like, oh yeah, bring a blanket backstage because you're going to want to like lay down. And I'm like, I can't even get, I can't even like breathe. (laughs) I didn't know any different either. So Drew told me after the show, he was like, that was the most stressful first show for an athlete I've ever had. And I was like, what? Like, I, I, I didn't know what just happened. Um, so that's also like why I was really looking forward to South Carolina. Cause I was like, let me do this right Mm -hmm. (laughs) and get there early. And I had like, a much more relaxed process like show day prep and all that stuff for that show. Um, But yeah, I mean, I didn't know any different. So like it was just chaotic because I was so just move, 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 like get all these things done. And I didn't know any different. So I didn't, I don't know. So here's here's Part. I was gonna say I was gonna say a good question for you as her coach. Like, so you know, she didn't realize that it was chaotic. She just thought this is how it was supposed to be. So yeah. how did how did you as her as her coach kind of mitigate that? You know what I mean? Just just yeah, well, keep her keep her even. I mean, I was up till what we one o'clock doing tan with you. So yeah, you know, and then it, I had to hear and make up at like four three thirty a.m. Wow. Right, and so with girl power, right? There's no there's no men's divisions. Yes, right? and they mm-hmm. start at nine. Yeah. So that timeline gets crammed way up for mm-hmm. the girls. Mm-hmm. So there Especially was like Addie being figure. figure, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like there was yeah. three WPDs. So like. So she was on at 915. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty, yeah. Like, pretty yeah, much. yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah. But it, I think like Addie said, it goes back to Thursday, right? And, and this is something I find that's harder to get athletes to understand when they are semi-local, right? So like we're mm-hmm. our, with no traffic on I-4, it's a 75 minute drive from our house where she literally lives. 10 minutes from my house in Florida, okay. about 75 minutes from there to the, to Avanti with traffic. It can take what it took you like three hours to get there. Four hours. Yeah. It took a while. So oh, wow. she, I wanted her there around like two o'clock. Yeah. So then I could start doing base. You know, we, she did base coat Thursday night with tan. We could start some super dark Friday. By the time she got there, Jay was doing the walkthrough with the girls with Jessica Delias for Friday okay. night before check-ins. And then we were right to check in. So like, I didn't get to like see her, just her and I, it's like 6.15. Yeah. So now it's Friday night, 6.15. She doesn't look like she has a tan on. on. <laughs> and I didn't know. They didn't tell me that. They were just like, you need more tan. <laughs> well, and it, it, it's, it's fine not to stress the athlete out, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. How do I That's get so Yeah. This I'm, is what we do as coaches. Everything's fine. We got it. Everything's good. We're good. <laughs> You're cool. No problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we were, we were on her. She was on her feet way too much, you know, and then it, it just – it just wasn't ideal. And that's when we talked about, you know, junior, junior says, we really wanted to try to win the overall to try to get that, that cost, you know, that entry paid. Yeah. Um, she missed it by one spot. You know, she was battling out for the overall. Um, I didn't see that side note. Sorry, squirrel. I didn't see that girl that won the overall backstage at junior says. I didn't, I, she wasn't there. I don't yeah. Think. I didn't see her. Sorry. Um, so, you know, we were in the mix, got the feedback from Sandy. Sandy was just like, she just needs more size. So we, we talked yeah. about just trying to bring her in as full as possible, even if it meant just being slightly spilled. Yeah. Um, but, and like her and I, we talked about that. Like, we're going to, we're going to try to do everything we can do to hang in here with, you know, bringing a relative knife to a gunfight with, with the natural aspect of things and her age. Right. 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 So we just did everything we could there, but got her there Thursday. Um, Nicole, one of Addie's really good friends, one of our good friends, um, Drove up with her on Thursday. Nicole helped with tan all week, and it just it made it a lot easier for her, a lot more enjoyable. You know, then there's the family aspect too, and friends they want to come and support you at your yeah. first show. And it's great. We love that, but it's very tough on an athlete to balance. Absolutely. Like, mom wants photos, and dad wants like we want to, all of our friends here. I want to say hi to them, but then like coaches like come check in with me, and it, it so yes. it, and you learn. Um, you know, so you would you talk about that a little bit too? I was yeah. I was literally walking to go backstage before my first show and my mom goes me and Heidi are here can you come say hi no <laughs> can't. no no I can't no. <laughs> sorry no yeah 
Yeah, but I get I get that, and parents are going to be like that too. I, mean, I did the New York Pro years ago, and I'm sitting backstage, and I get a text from my dad. When are you going to be on? Like, I don't know, Dad. When, when, <laughs> whatever bikini's on, that's what I'm on. They're getting bored in the audience. I'm like, just sit there. <laughs> you know, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm backstage right now. You know, and it's hard. It's mentally. It's like, oh, now now you feel bad because now your family's out there waiting for you. You can't exactly. go see them. You know what I mean? So it is. It's tough. I mean, that's why my husband doesn't come with me to most of my shows. He'll come like once in like every couple years because <laughs> then I don't have to babysit and it's not even that they're the problem it's that in your head you're like I feel like I need to go you know be hospitable you know what I mean and mm-hmm. it's just like it just adds that other layer that other layer of stress on top when, it, when in reality they're just they're just like they're excited to see you they don't care really to be honest so <laughs> that's how funny. has that been for you Addy like with you know relationships and friendships and like how did you manage like the social part of it during prep like was that difficult oh for gosh. you that's like a whole that's a whole like I could talk about that for a long time <laughs> um I mean yes it was difficult I would say um I mean, where do I start with that? Like, well, here's the I, are you dating? Because obviously, we're all of us were married. You're not. Um, so, no, did you have, did you put that onto the side burner? What did you, What did you do? Yeah, no, I I'm I've never been more single in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, it was hard because I have like now that I moved back to my hometown, I have all my high school friends here. Okay, it's like my high school friends, like we go out. And we yeah. drink together. And now that we're not doing that, it's like I could go out with them and be sober, but like at the expense of my sleep. And I'm not going to do that. So, like, I would say right off the bat, there's like that isolation. Yeah. Just like, I don't know. I got really used to saying no to things and they got used to hearing no. Um, and that was obviously tough. It still is tough because I'm still like, now that I'm like transitioning out of it, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. About. But um, yeah, it was just like finding the balance of like saying no, but also trying to be nice and like, hey, I still love you guys. I just can't do these things. And they obviously like they still showed up to my show. Like they're super supportive. Mm-hmm. It's just like hard for them to understand why I'm changing and like doing all these different things. And even now, I don't think, I don't, I don't know where their head's at, but like in, if I think from their point of view, they're thinking, oh, she's done now. Maybe she can come out with us now. Like that, yeah. but that's also like <laughs> not going to be a thing. So well, we're going to, we're going to work on that. We're, we're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just, I've built a lot of new habits and so like through that transition it was hard but it also showed me like who's really there for me like who's like going to be i don't know who can who reaches out still and is like let's go walk on the beach instead of like going out to dinner or like even if i still do go out to dinner or i bring my meal prep or like whatever i don't know because there's those friends that would like make the little adjustments or like or i would make the adjustments to get to do things with people. But I mean, towards the end of prep, it was like, no, I got to like, I I have my things and I really can't see anyone. So yeah, Yeah, that kind of, I don't know if I'm off topic now. No, no, no. That's, I mean, I think that's something we all have to deal with. I know I did when I got into sport. I mean, my whole circle of friends changed. My whole circle of friends changed. Mm -hmm. And and now, I mean, from when I started back then, there's one of them that I still keep in contact with. The rest of them I don't because this is with anything in life. When you start to mm-hmm. evolve and you start to change, your people that are around you are going to start to change. You know? I call them in your 20s. You know, yeah. you're in that weird part of life where, like, you still have your college friends yeah. and you're still, you know, really connected with your family, you know, living at home or things like that. But you're also becoming who you are and yeah. maybe that's changing a little bit. And then also the friends around you are growing and changing and and you're in this extreme sports. So you had all of that. And it's yeah. so complicated. And what I love what you said is I'm developing habits. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's going to continue to help you through that process. And I think that's what Drew was also butting in and saying is like, we're going to work on life balance, <laughs> you know, in the off season of how to, you know, manage your friendships and your relationships and not be so strict and hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's really important in your off season to find that for you, but also the people around you, you know, yeah. so they can have that time with you as well. Yeah, I think yeah. athletes forget that like 
just back to like Jay and I's story, I was the unsupportive husband in the beginning, right? <laughs> like I was the one that wanted to go to Bella Vino wine bar across the street every Friday night, drink a bottle of wine, go to e and &E Steakhouse, have a fat ribeye with Jay mm -hmm. every Friday night, you know? And that's where I really, really want to work with my athletes on that balance because sure, I'm a coach. Jay's obviously a competitor. There's aspects that I get being on the other side. But then at, then at the same time, I have to put the coach hat on. I'm like, okay, Jay, like, no, we're not screwing around. So I get, I, it, it's just hard. So I, I just try to really help the best I can because I have both emotions inside. Whereas yeah. I'm the, the supportive husband, but then also the coach. So it gets weird, like for Jay and I sometimes, you know. Yep. And I think that's in, in general that that happens, you know, and, and, because you're you're in a unique situation, you guys, you two are because you're in the sport, and you know that doesn't happen with a lot of couples. It doesn't happen with a lot of marriages. It doesn't happen with a lot of friends. It doesn't happen with a lot of family. You know, I say that about my husband all the time. He was a wrestler, so he understands the the like not specifically bodybuilding, but understands being an elite athlete. You know, and mm -hmm. having to sacrifice and things like that. And most of the time, people just don't. They don't get it. So you have to be okay with you know. I was we was that saying of no is a complete sentence. It, it's okay to say no. It's okay to, to make those sacrifices for what you want versus, you know, trying to be a people pleaser. I know I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I know a lot, I of, them, a lot of us are. I call them growing pains. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're, you're how old? 20, how old? 23. 23. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have a lot of those. <laughs> but um, so if you could go back and change anything, what would you do? What would you do differently? About my prep? Yeah, the whole thing. From 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 A to B, from from when you started with Drew all the way up till now. Huh. Well, it's funny because during prep, I was like, I shouldn't have taken my off season so serious. Like I, I remember going out to eat at a like a I, I don't know what type it was like Japanese food in my off season and in St. Pete. And I ordered a side of white rice and a shrimp skewer and tracked like two tablespoons of oil. And I remember being like so anxious about it. And then it came out and I was like in my off season, like I should be growing. Right. Yeah. I, it came out and it was like three shrimp and a bowl of rice. And I was like happy with it because I tracked it. And then in prep, I was like, I should have gotten like stir fry. <laughs> like I, I regretted not getting like something good that night. But um, I don't know. That goes back to like I'm learning how to navigate going out to eat and yeah. stuff. Like being a normal, a normal human, but also like being on track. That was my off season. Obviously, I couldn't do that in prep. But um, I remember having that thought during prep, but also at the same time, I am so appreciative of the fact that I did take my off season so seriously because it set the bar and it set my habits to where my friends were used to me bringing foods places. Like if I were to go out in St. Pete, I brought a cooler with my yogurt bowl at night and like I had my rice cakes and I had like my friends were already used to seeing me doing those things. So going into prep, it was kind of like, yeah, very easy transition. Like they already knew that I was going to be that person. So um, I don't know what else I would change though. Cause that's like a, that's like a, I would be more lenient, but I'm also thankful that I was so strict. So I don't really know how to define that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. During my prep, I don't know any different, like from what yeah. my prep was. So it's hard to say. Um, I would say that during my prep, I wish I customized my meal plan more. Like I wish I communicated to Drew that like, at the beginning when I got my meal plan that like, I don't know, I wanted a different protein source or like something, something like that, because I, I'm very much the type of athlete that's going to just take whatever he gives me and just follow it and <laughs> not ask any questions if yeah. answer puts, um, and just like adhere to the plan. So like I was on asparagus my whole prep. And at one point, like, or at some point, I wish I could have like transitioned to green beans or like just something. Because mm -hmm. actually, there was a time where I was, I told Drew, I was like, I had a nightmare that I ate a cucumber. And <laughs> so he put cucumbers in my meal plan. So, like, just having that communication aspect, I wish I communicated more of like my little like mental feelings mm -hmm. with like 
my meal plan, for example, or like stuff like that. So I would say I wish I communicated more, but I mean, I don't, yeah, again, I don't know any different from the prep that I did have. So. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's common. I think athletes are afraid to almost disappoint their coach, you know, yeah. by asking questions, but in reality, we're here to help you make it better for you. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, if you, if you can communicate with me and say, Hey, I want cucumbers. Cool. You can have cucumbers. No problem. You know what I yeah. mean? No, it's not a big deal. It's like once you once you ask that first time and you get past that first, like, oh, it wasn't that big of a deal. Then at that point, it comes it becomes a little bit easier, you know. Well, and then we we were on macros, so we we did macros all week. At what, like first two weeks or something? What? Or wait, no, are you talking about in between shows? Yeah. Yeah, and that was amazing. Yeah, so from <laughs> girl power. From girl power through Junior USA's, we stayed just on a macro plan where I just did macros per meal for her, um, and then you know she would she would submit essentially her day for me to look at and review, and then if I needed to make any tweaks, we would talk about it, um, you know. And, and I think it's hard, right? And I know I know you both, Sean and Jay, you you get this like athletes. Well, I want a meal plan. Like they're they're dead set on a meal plan, and I'm very vocal with my athletes on a meal plan. It is going to be rice, oats, yeah. cream of rice, yeah. nut butter, coconut oil. Asparagus. Asparagus, ground turkey, ground beef, Potato, potatoes. <laughs> because I, I, I'm not going to write. I'm not going to write. I mean, I have 62 athletes right now. I'm not going to yeah. write 62 different meal plans with 62 like with different sources. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Let's learn in the off season how to be efficient in macro tracking. It's better mm -hmm. for your gut. It's better for the social aspect, the mental aspect. So I'm really in it's coming from somebody that early on in my career I was like macros. Nope. Yep. We're always on a meal plan. So, but I'm learning, you know, to evolve, um, you know, I think it's something Jamie's done a really good job of helping me with and meeting the athlete where they are and just mm -hmm. helping me just like unplug a little bit. So, but it worked great. Like both, I had three girls at Junior SAs, two of them were peaked fully on macros and one was on a meal plan. So. I'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you're unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're gonna find, you're gonna find really high quality pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code CUTIES10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, Go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out prozis.com. So I think what yeah. happens as you get uh, more into this as, a, as an athlete is you understand what your body can do and what it can't with. The you know, you, you get the macros are easier at that point. You know, I, I said that this before, like when I first started, it was all meal plans. I didn't do macros until I was with the body. And I'm glad that I went that direction at first because I just didn't, I would, I wouldn't have known any better, mm. you know, now I do. Now I understand <clears throat> how my body functions better with different types of foods. And I even said that in my check-in with Jamie today, I was like, I was having some digestive issues this past week. And I realized it's because I put peanut butter in my diet and I have an aversion to peanut butter. And I was like, oh, that's why, duh. You know, like you start to, you start to realize like, <laughs> yeah, like I should have known. <laughs> I should have known. You know, it's like, there's a reason why. But, you know, you start to learn those things. When you first start, you don't know. You know, yeah. like you said, like you said, like, I don't know what I would have done different because I don't know anything different, you know, yeah. this is what it is. So sometimes, sometimes doing that basic, like, okay, we're going to do X, Y, Z for each meal is easier. And then you can start to learn and then you can start to experiment. And then you can start to say, okay, I actually like this better. Like you said, for me, macros was huge for my gut health. Huge, huge, huge. I got so many intolerances from being on the same freaking meals every single day, all the time. But by switching up those sources sometimes, you know, it just helps to get that, that, your, your gut health back, back to normal. You know what I mean? So, um, so are you on macros now or are you on a meal plan now? I'm okay. on macros now, but I was so excited to <laughs> get macros. Cause I was like, wait, I can put shredded lettuce in my, in my things. Like I could do like all these like little things that I've yeah. always wanted to do, but I felt like I couldn't because my meal plan was just like 
chicken, rice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's and then there's the opposite extreme of that. Some people come to me and say that they've been doing macros. I look at their actual plan and they're eating nothing but processed foods all day long. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, my meal plan definitely gave me the knowledge that like I want to eat these whole foods or like the foods that I'm used to eating because they make me feel good. Yep. So I was like able to. I basically for my macros, I would eat the same like sources, but I added like yogurt or like fruit that I didn't have before or just like little things, but overall I kept it the same. And I think that if I started off on macros and I had macros the whole time, I wouldn't have known to do that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And the biggest did. thing with the meal, I'm trying to like, it's more sodium really. It's more of like the yeah. micro micros and, and electrolyte balance, mm -hmm. you know, is it's most athletes by the time, if we're taking them to a, na a national level show, they, they're going to understand, you know, carbs, proteins, and fats. But it's it's more just controlling those like sodium loads and things like that, fiber. fiber right to making sure you know some athletes they cram fiber way high when food yeah. gets low. I mean we what was our lowest seventy five carb, twenty fat. I can pull it up. Yeah, that's a good question. One thirty five protein. That's a really actually great segue because I want to talk about which I know you're going to remember this day very fondly when you <laughs> went and attended Clash, the Clash show. And would you say that that was pretty much your hardest day on prep? Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that. So obviously we know here, you know, for everybody that has competed, there's days where you just really have to dig and you're hungry <laughs> and there is no energy. And the day that I'm referring to is Addie Keeman watched a show. She drove over from uh, Largo to um, Orlando. So again, that couple hour mm -hmm. drive, they left super early in the morning. They were leaving that night. And Addie was literally falling asleep in the audience at one point. That day. Um, so, very low on energy. So what is that day like? And like, talk about that. You know, obviously we know hunger is inevitable in this mm -hmm. sport. And how did you develop or what was that mental fortitude like on that, on those days where you were just, everything in you is telling you to rest and to cheat on your diet and everything else. And what was the tools that you developed from that experience? And what did that feel like? Well, I'll say the first thing is I never had the thought to cheat on my diet. I was like, that wasn't even an option. But that day specifically, one, it was like a week after Miami. <laughs> so I was like still recovering sleep wise. Uh, I had 75 minutes of fasted cardio before the drive. So I was like, I would like to eat my breakfast at some point on the drive. So I need to do fasted. So I woke up at I don't know, maybe four. I don't even know what time that day. Um, hopped on my Peloton upstairs, which I'm so thankful that my family has because it's right here. Um, and then me and Nicole road tripped it up to Orlando, had the day. Um, I didn't even like realize that I was dying and you guys were like, damn, Addie, you like you're dying. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I'm fine. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I was just exhausted. Um, I had all my meals packed, of course, like everything was in my, in the cooler, in the car. Um, and then, I mean, like I was just going through the motions. I was fine, but like, I wasn't fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, there was one point where I was, uh, eating cucumbers in the back of Nicole's car as we were driving them to dinner at the end of the day. And I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm toast. Like I'm exhausted, but I, I don't know. <laughs> looking was looking back, it's not as hard when you look back. When you look back on it, and you're like, oh, it really wasn't that bad. It was okay. It was fine. Like, I also am not the person who's going to be like, wow, I am, like, really tired. I, I won't admit that to myself because I don't yeah. want to acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I just, I frame my mindset where I'm like, I'm here. Like, I'm fine. It's, it's good. Like, I'm just doing the things that I need to do. And even uh, during finals, I had to leave because I was like, I have 45 more minutes of cardio. <laughs> so I had to go into the gym at Avanti and nothing, no machines work in there. <laughs> so I'm like on the little sitting spin thing, just like trying to <laughs> stay awake, but also like, uh, just get my, get my cardio done. So, I mean, yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. I had a energy drink at some point, I believe. Was it worth it? Was it all worth it? <laughs> oh, of course. Good. Of course. <laughs> you, was it, do you think it was harder or easier than what you anticipated? The whole process? Do you think it was harder or do you oh, think it was easier? hundred percent harder. <laughs> okay. I had no idea what I was signing up for. Like fully. 
Because yeah. you, know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Um, it's funny. Like, I didn't know I had to shave my whole body for show day. Like, and I was like, if I had known that when I started, I don't know if I would have done this. That's <laughs> <laughs> not like as simple as shaving the whole body. That's too yeah. And you still no, haven't, I, you still have not mastered that, by the way. <laughs> what, else, what else? What other things did you not realize that you were shocked at? Are there any others? Brain fog, prep brain. I did not know what that meant. And I don't think anyone will know what that means until they experience it. Good point. Um, because in my head, I was like, oh, that's so silly. Like, you'll forget things or like, you'll just like not be like, you literally feel like a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't feel like alive partially. Um, and I, I just didn't know what that was going to be like until I actually experienced it. And I was like, wow. Yeah. This when is- you, what you feel like that kicked in? Like, what? how far out were you? Probably right after Miami, right? That, well, that's what I was going to say is like, yeah. I would love to, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Like. I would love to know, I just really feel in my heart of hearts, like that catalyst for her was the perfect time, right? When things had to get kind of pushed, like that was just looking back, not ideal, Sorry. right? Well, I mean, but listen, like, hindsight 2020. right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, life happens. Because, life happens. Like, prep was so smooth up into that point, like yeah. so smooth, yeah. right? To where like we were like still six weeks out and I'm like, I think I'm going to just throw her in class, see how she does, get the overall and then get her paid for junior essays. Yeah. And I, I didn't get to see figure or yeah, figure because I was backstage, but I, uh, Marie, um, one of my figure pros, she was like, I, I think it would have been close if she, she could have probably grabbed the overall there. But, you know, I just, it, you'll learn, right? So like next, next time, if we do a show in May, are you going to ultra? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Okay, because my days in Miami, I, I didn't really talk about this yet, but my days in Miami, like I would wake up, do my 75 minutes plastic cardio, I'd walk down the street to this gym, um, and then like try to participate in everything that everyone was doing. So even like the days before Ultra, because I was there for like a week, four days, oh. it's like a Wednesday. Yeah, five days, <laughs> um, the days like I would just be around everyone. And then they would go out at night. Obviously I went out, I was just sober. Um, and then we would get home at like three or four or whatever that is. And then I had to wake up and do my fasted cardio again. Like, <laughs> like it was just a like every day. Yeah. I was just on like no sleep and then an hour and whatever, how long of cardio total per day and training and getting all my meals in. And luckily, like, there were bodybuilders there. So, like, my friend Emma would come to Fasted Cardio with me every day. And that was awesome because she was, like, peak off season, and I was in prep. So it was, like, a yin and a yang, but we were still doing the same things. Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, I mean, it was just – it was a lot, but, like, I had fun. <laughs> yeah. I've said that I've done prep on – I've been on vacation in prep before, and it's it's actually – not hard to do when you're committed to it. You know what I mean? You just get up a little earlier and all that kind of stuff. But that said, I mean, yours was a little bit more uh, intense, intensive, <laughs> extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Everything, everything to the extreme here, bodybuilding and uh, music festivals. <laughs> and it's, it's funny because if, if like my friends in my hometown were to ask me to like go out, I'd be like, no, but yeah. Miami, <laughs> like I'm in Miami. I'm going to do this. Like, I was like, I was like, here. Because before Miami, I was like, I still have energy. Like, how is this? Like, I'm still okay. How is this? Yeah. Like, I might as well. Plus, like, it was basically, like, free because it was, like, a company trip. So I was like, when am I going to get this opportunity again? Yeah. And I still have the energy, and I get to see a bunch of friends, and I can make it work because I know I'm very type A, and I will plan everything out to a T to where I know that I won't make it work. And I still made it work. It just killed well, me. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good lesson there, too, because, yeah, it, you made it work. And, yeah, it pushed your goal back a little bit, but you still made it there. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's like you're going to have – people are people are going to have bumps in the road during their preps and during their off-seasons and stuff like that. You just got to push through it. And, you, and the wonderful thing is now we have, we have shows every freaking weekend. So if you have to push it back a little bit, you can do that. You can still make your make your goal happen of getting on stage. You just have to pivot and be, be willing to accept the – consequences of your actions you know what I mean but you can still enjoy your life at the same time like I try to tell people that too it's like at the end of the day this is a hobby you know mm-hmm. you should be you should be enjoying it it's like yeah it's extreme it pushes you it challenges you it makes you a better person in a lot of ways 
but it's still a hobby at the end of the day mm-hmm. too. You know, you, you got to have fun with your friends and it's a work trip. You know, you got to do your work shit. Like it just is what it is, you know, like it, you, you have to, you have to live your life too. So, um, and you can still be successful at the same time when you do it. So, I mean, in my defense, we did decide not to do the show before I decided to go to Miami. There you go. Bye. So there you go. It, wasn't, it wasn't in result of that, but yeah. Yeah. That was just the catalyst that hit your body hard, you know? People, people yeah. forget, like, those things make a difference, too. It's like all of a sudden you're you're expending a lot more energy than what you typically do, and it takes your body a whole lot longer to recover because mm-hmm. you just you put yourself into such a deficit and all that kind of stuff with everything, not just your yeah. food, but your, your rest and everything is in a deficit. So you just have to be prepared for that. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what the did felt like until that weekend. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, this past year I was in prep during the Olympia and typically during the Olympia, I go out and I go to the bars and all that kind of stuff after the shows and all that. And the show's like, Nope, I got to go do my cardio and I got to go to sleep. <laughs> I was like, good night. And, <laughs> like, podcast with me. <laughs> and podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I got to show in two weeks. I got to go sleep and do a podcast. <laughs> So Addison, for first time competitors, now that you've been through the whole process, what are some like show day essentials that you feel like uh first time competitors should have like in their backstage bag or with them on show weekend? Was there anything? I was, I was thinking about this this morning, actually, because I had that zip up Gymshark big hoodie and I wore that thing more than I wore my silk robe. Yeah. Like I loved having something that I could zip up that was big. It was like it's like a large men's uh hoodie. And then I had uh, my oversized dark sport sweatpants mm-hmm. that were like flare. They weren't like mm-hmm. the right. bottom or whatever. So I would wear that like after my tan dried, like just to throw something on over. And so like that for sure. Um, backstage pump up bands. Because yeah. <laughs> I did not have those. <laughs> um, and... I mean, there's whatever coach has you bring food wise, like rice cakes, honey, um, backstage. What else? I was told to bring headphones, but <laughs> did not need those. Yeah. Um, and then I still had a blanket. I did use my blanket at junior USA's. Um, it was cold back there. Um, what else? I agree with you on the hoodies and all that stuff personally too. I'm yeah, especially you it yeah. up in the front so you don't have yeah. to put it on over your head. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and then obviously mm-hmm. I had Burks for my shoes because mm-hmm. that was easy. Burks. Burks. No, you did your own tan. Did you do your Did you do your own hair and makeup, or did you just do your own tan? No, I had uh, Lebo do the hair and makeup. Yeah. How was that? Was Was the appointment scheduling and all that good? Like I know sometimes with the, with. Oh boy! Did I just ask a loaded question? <laughs> I'm like, I've seen all the smiles. Oh, was it really? <laughs> my first show, I think my was my appointment at three thirty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So my first show, my appointment was at three thirty, and I was like, didn't know any difference. I was like, okay, whatever. And then it was just really early. And then so for my second show, when she when I got the email that my appointment was at three, I was like, no. <laughs> like because after that first experience knowing what my body was like not my body but like having that show day experience that started so early I was like is there any way you guys can move it like to a later time like I understand I'm figuring you have to put me at the beginning but do I really have to be the first appointment um and she was like well the only other opening we have is 8 20 that would have been a nightmare because yeah the at yeah. nine so there was Nothing I could really do about that. In hindsight, like now moving forward, I think I will practice doing my own. One, because that was a check and a half. Um, two, mm-hmm. I I can do makeup. I just need to like practice it. Um, yeah, that way I can do it on my own schedule. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard because because I do hair and makeup at shows too, and it's that's how we do our scheduling. It's like you know, yeah. you know, figure's gonna be first, women's physique's gonna be first. It is what it is, and we usually start at three o'clock in the morning. So yeah. my show day was like a twenty-two hour day. Like I was <clears> up <throat> for twenty-two hours. Yep, yep. It's it's hard. But it was a lot more relaxed than my first show. So <laughs> um, let's see what else. What other questions do you guys have for her? The last thing I was just going to ask is, is there any advice that to anybody listening that you want to share with them? Is there anything that we didn't touch on or that you think is important to share? Um, oh, geez, I probably do, but I <laughs> haven't thought about it. Um, I would say 
One thing that really helped me with my prep was taking time to like journal. So like I implemented a lot of habits throughout prep, obviously for prep, but also like for my mental, like just having habits that are for yourself outside of like your prep things are, is really important. So I started this habit of charging my phone in the bathroom, like across from my room. So it's not next to my bed, Mm -hmm. which sounds so minor, but like it, has me to where if I want to scroll before bed, I'm standing in my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not laying yeah. in bed. So yeah. I'm like standing and then I'm like, okay, that's enough. And I'll put it away. And then I have my room to sleep. Um, and then in the mornings, I don't like touching it until like after I do like cardio or like after I journal or I just have like certain things that I like having in my morning routines that keep me grounded and like, I don't know in my own world because as soon as you open up your phone you're immediately susceptible to whatever your phone wants to show you so um starting your day off like with the focus on you and like i don't know i had a journal just to have like i would do a to-do list for the day and then i'd have affirmations and then i would kind of just brain dump whatever i was thinking so uh, I didn't get like fully locked in at this, but what I liked doing was doing my Peloton without my phone and either like reading or like doing something that wasn't on my phone and then journaling after that. So that would stem like my mind to just think whatever I need to think for myself um, that's not being fed by any outside information. And then I'd have that just personal time in the morning um, to just check in with myself and at that time throughout prep. So I wish I started that sooner because I also really enjoyed the mornings where my fasted cardio was like a walk and I would just like go on a walk, no headphones, nothing, and just like appreciate life. <laughs> like it, it just made me really grateful for like the whole experience. Like I remember having the days where I was like, I'm definitely going to implement this into my off season because it's just so nice to like um, something I would do is like focus on how many noises I can hear. So like you would count the, which is something I learned from Justin Mahaley, actually. Uh, He would go on his morning walks and then like count like a car going by, a bird chirping or like just just to like ground yourself and like be present. Um, And so just like little habits like that and just focusing on your mental health throughout prep is something that was huge for me. Yeah, I do the same thing with sitting outside at night when I when I'm like winding down for the day and stuff like that. Just lis- listening to the frogs, yep. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. We have a ton of frogs in our, in our yard right now. I don't know. It's like mating mm-hmm. season or something. They're all like yelling at each other all night. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> listening to the frogs, you just start realizing like it's it's you have to be grateful, like you said, mm-hmm. grateful for where you are and having the opportunity to do this because it is. It's not a, um, it's, it's a privilege, correct? It's not a, it's not a requirement. It's a privilege. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we, if we keep thinking in that sense, no matter how hard it gets, we st- step back and say, we're still really blessed to be able to do this exactly. period, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, especially like living with my family at home, like that definitely had its bumps in the road in itself, like throughout prep. So I would be able to ground myself and be like, okay, I, Yes, this sucks at times, but I'm not paying rent and my family loves me and I'm being there like they're supportive of everything that I do. And so, yeah, it just like keeps your head on straight. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that those are all things to be thankful for, for sure. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's it's a big deal when you got people in your life to support you. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of if they understand it or if they don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How about you, babe? Uh, I was just going to say, Drew, anything else that you wanted to add? No, I mean, you know, Addie's from, from when we started, you know, till she's just been locked in. And as a coach, you know, it's all you could really ever ask for out of an athlete, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting now to hear where she wishes she would have communicated a bit more, right? You know, <laughs> and I think, you know, it goes both ways. Maybe that's something I can do better with my, my newer athletes and just – asking questions back, you know, or my check-in questionnaire has got like 20 questions, but you know, I, I don't want an athlete to ever feel like they're bothering me or, you know, yeah. if I got to go in and change asparagus to green beans, like that's, <laughs> that's basic yeah. mental math at this point for me writing meal plans. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, she's just, she's just a dream to coach as an athlete. You know, we, we've been having some talks with, you know, outside of this, you know, where she wants to go with, with life and career and, 
Um, I think she has a very bright future in this sport if, if she wants it. Um, obviously, you can just – the discipline she has and the yeah. focus. And, you know, she's so mature for her age. Um, That's why I asked. I was like, how old are you again? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's, just, it's just a student of the sport. And, you know, when we were at this the FBF Summit, you know, uh, uh, during Q, Q and A, somebody had asked, you know, what I look for in an athlete, and that is one of the things I look for in an athlete is, you know, being a student of the sport. You know, how can we be, be better each and every time? Myself as a coach, you know, something like I, I want to ask Addy, like, what, what, what could I have done better for her? You know, um, obviously, I know the Friday before clash, um, or girl power. I'm sorry, could have been better. You know, I don't know if she knows this, but I called Xander, who's one of our trainers, because I, I checked the cameras and she was so far behind. She was so far behind on her day. And I knew, I knew she was in trouble. Check the cameras in our gym, just to be yeah, clear. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. She's out here, he's out here stalking his athletes. No, <laughs> so she had sent me a posing video. I have no idea. So she had sent me a posing video of that morning, how she woke up at the gym. And then I checked and she was just like lollygagging, lollygagging around. So I called Xander, I was like, yo. Are you, do you have any, do you have any clients right now? He's like, no, I'm free. I'm just doing admin stuff. I was like, okay, I need you. I said, you've been through a couple of shows with me. You know what I like to do on my pump up on one day out. I need you to keep her moving and get her out that door so she can get to me. But I was trying not to stress her out. Right. right. And this is something where I'm like, I said, don't say anything to her, help her with the weights, get them on, get them off. Like, let's just, so, you know, I, I tried my best to get her to me. I know, I know I four, if you leave. If you leave past 11 o'clock to try to get from Largo to um, Tampa, you're going to be sitting on I-4. Um, so I just kind of knew this, and I was, like, just trying to get her get her to me in Orlando. Um, but, you know, I wish I wish I'd have been a little bit more, you know, stern with her on on that maybe. Um, but other than that, I, didn't uh, know. I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At home after the gym, like, packing, and I'm like, ah. Like, I didn't know. But the thing with me is, like, if you tell me, like, you need a hurry, I move slower. <laughs> Good enough. But I didn't know at all, so... Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good thing you did. it's a good thing you went through your trainer and not through her basically <laughs> well and that's the thing it's like trying not to stress them out right it's her right. first show like mm -hmm. you know i knew i knew like how she was looking i was very happy proud of how she was looking you know so i just wanted to get her to me so that i could just yeah. land yeah. the plane right so yep. um yeah so that was just kind of funny like after story with with x or xander and i was just called them because i was freaking out and that, I mean, ask Jay, because, like, I was just like... Well, I was leaving check-ins, and she was walking in, and I thought in the back of my mind, oh, shoot, we're, we're going to be in for a long time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. And I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, right. that's the thing that people... I think that's a really good message, actually, for people to understand, is that as coaches, like, we kind of put into it sometimes even more stress <laughs> than the athletes do. <laughs> it's like... So we want you to do your best. We know how hard you've been working and we've been working hard for you too. You know, we want, we want you to do well, you know? So it's like when, when we know, and we've, we, obviously you don't know what you don't know. We know what we know. <laughs> it's like, we know where you need to be, when you need to be there, why you need to be there, all those kinds of things. We know all these things. And so it's like, it's hard to have that balance as a coach of communicating what you need to communicate without, like you said, stressing the athlete out, making them freak out. Uh, I've seen so many coaches that don't know how to do that and they just end up really screwing their own clients over you know what i mean so it's a really hard balancing act sometimes because again you don't know any different you're just you're just like do, do, do. it's my first show yay <laughs> you know <laughs> you even told me in between pre-judging and finals like i laid down like i was taking a nap and he was like do i wake her up for another oh, right. pan, or do i do i let her sleep like what do i do what do i do and i yeah. like, didn't know any different because yeah. nicole nicole had gone to train and I texted Nicole, I was like, hey, is she asleep? And she's like, I don't know, I'm training. And I was like, I know she's going to be flat because I know she needs to eat. And I know we're going for the overall because we were dead center in her open class. So I'm like having this internal battle. I'm like, okay, do I let her, <laughs> I just let her sleep? Do I let her eat? Do I wait yeah. for her to eat? I was like, I kept going back and forth. So I told Nicole, I was like, I need you to hurry through your workout. I'm so sorry. But like, get back to the room and just try to be quiet. But so, yeah, that, that's, that is true between prejudging and finals. Yeah 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 that's so funny but it's great to have a coach that cares that much too so i'm sitting here thinking about this i'm 100%. like i'm like i've had coaches who d didn't even check in with me on show day <laughs> you know? i'm like sitting here i'm like well damn 
I'm like, all right, cool. Like that was awesome. <laughs> I've had I've had three applications in the last three weeks, we'll call it, where these girls have missed prejudging because their coaches like didn't guide them through. So um, my heart would be I would be crushed if something absolutely. like if this athlete dieted down for 16 weeks, 20 yeah. weeks, whatever it is, and then we miss prejudging. Yeah. I mean, there was a girl at Junior SAs that was in wellness, miss prejudging. From hair and makeup. From hair and makeup, which goes back to the earlier appointment is better, by, yeah, by yeah, the way, yeah, yeah. so you, yeah. they don't get delayed. Yeah. Um, but they just told her she could go up and pose a bikini if she wanted to, like, practice posing, but, like, that was it. Oh, like, you know, wow. what, do you, what, what do you do? Mm -hmm. so. Well, there was a girl, and I don't remember which show it was last this past summer. It was, I think it was, it was one of the Pittsburgh shows where she was probably going to win, win her class, which would have meant she was going to win her pro card, but she got stuck in traffic going back for finals and missed finals. So, so they gave the pro cards the next slot down. Yep. So it's like, that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck big time. <laughs> like, and you know, and again, as a coach, you just beat yourself up over that too. You know what I mean? Like that, that that's uh, avoidable avoidable and on all on all stretches of everything that's avoidable you know just stay where you are especially if you're out for a pro card like don't go freaking run around the city what are you doing just i out. wouldn't let i don't think i would let one of my athletes so they're splitting center <laughs> top three i especially like the pittsburgh national shows yeah i'd probably make are. them i would make them stay in the lobby or Absolutely. in my room like i'm we're no, not they're coming back to our room i'm, I'm like right. put them in their crate don't move <laughs> right don't move you're right here, here come out close, eat and go back in your crate <laughs> Lock them down. Lock you're, them you're not allowed out. You're not allowed no. out. <laughs> I'll, give no, you food, I'll give you food and water, but you're not allowed out. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I will say I'm very, very, very grateful for Jay and Drew because they really do go above and beyond for their athletes. And that was something I didn't realize until show day and just like looking at other athletes and like Drew, I mean, my first show, Drew was literally on me until like the second I went on stage because of my tan. But like some people don't have their coaches at shows. Like that's a common thing. And I just don't even know how I would begin to navigate show day without him there. So I am very thankful for that. Well, and on, the, on the flip side of that too, like I've, you know, I've worked with Jamie for the last four years and every one of my shows, she's not been there, mm -hmm. but she's, she's been a phone call, FaceTime away. You know what I mean? Even when I was in Japan and it's freaking 2 a.m. her time, you know what I wow. mean? It's, it's, you know, she's, she, she's sending me videos for prejudging, <laughs> you know, and then it's freaking two o'clock in the morning where they're at, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's, it's just nice to have people feel, feel like you're, you matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've definitely had coaches who, again, they just, I've had coaches ghost me on peak week. It's like, all of a sudden they're just not responding to anything anymore. It's like, okay, cool. Cause I have a show in two days, but cool. <laughs> it's like, awesome. So, you know, it's, it, that, that's a big thing. And I think for me as an athlete, I think knowing that my coach cares is more important to me than the actual like placing or anything like that mm -hmm. on stage. Like as long as we checked all our boxes and tried to do all the things we could possibly do, we understand that there are things that we can't control. We can't control who shows up. We can't control how the show goes. We can't control the judging. We can't control all those things. But if we were able to control our controllables, it's a successful show. Mm -hmm. You know, if I feel like we did everything we could possibly do and then that's where we ended up, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? Even if it's dead last, I'm good with it as long as we did everything we could do. You know? And I think that's so hard for – like, and it's it's so true, <clears throat> especially on the national level shows in the, in the pro yeah. state. Like as you climb the ranks, you got to understand like if you've improved, like yeah. that's that's the win, you know. And mm -hmm. it's so hard because there's emotion tied to it obviously mm -hmm. and I, I get that. Um, but there's – we have to just control what we can control. We can't – you know, it's – I, I could tell a story about Marie with, at Masters Nationals. You know, uh, a girl came from the IFBB Elite League that had been competing as a pro for like a decade. She shows up. She wins the overall, obviously, and her happens to be in her class. Yeah. Bill turns around to me. Bill goes, if that girl didn't show up, you won the overall today. Yeah. Right? So we go from – Bill says, if that girl didn't show up, we won the overall to not getting a pro card. Right? So, and it's like – it's just so hard, but you know we controlled everything we can control. And Marie was going to be right. done at that point, right. and he said, "You need to bring her back for North Americans." Yeah, <laughs> already yeah. been dieting for so long. Like, <clears throat> you know, we really pushed her hard last year for that, and but she got the card. She got the card. Yeah. Absolutely, preparing for a pretty view. But I'm just saying, like, we have to take the emotion sometimes and put it off to the side and just say, yeah. like, okay, have I improved? You know, that's yeah. the first thing I asked for feedback. You know, with Sandy. You know, Sandy saw both. Um, Addie and Olivia, you know, two weeks earlier at Girl Power, she said, oh, my God, both girls improved dramatically. 
good job. Like, you know, and then now from there, it's like, okay, now what do you want moving forward? Yeah. Because you know, I know within two weeks, there's only so much we can do as coaches. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. That could, that could go back to what I was saying about like mental health and like why you're doing this sport, how important it is, because show day is just like, you can't control everything. So. And really. it's seconds, seconds yeah. of the entire prep. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like yeah. You, do, you do 16 to 20 weeks of this intense prep for seconds on stage. And that's yep. where you really have to, just like you're saying, identify your why. Why am I doing this? Is this bringing me joy day in mm -hmm. and day out? Because yeah. that truly, it's the journey to get to stage where you really have to love the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of people too join the sport sport for show day. Yep. I want to be up in sparkly bikini and get the photos yeah. and then I'm done. But they don't realize the sacrifice it's going to take <laughs> to get those photos to that Absolutely. point. Uh -huh. and are they really mentally ready? Probably yeah. not because they haven't done that work. And I love that you said that because I did that my first prep. Drew can attest to that. I did a personal development book. I did journaling in the morning. I tried to stay off my phone because I was so inundated with everything going around me in my phone. And I really had to keep touching in with myself. So yeah. I think what we're all really saying is a huge part about this sport is the mental. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. like anybody can go into the gym and do 75 minutes of cardio and anyone can go train and, but can you withstand the mental fortitude and have fun in the process? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think Addy, you've, you've leveled up, you've unlocked that. And I think that's going to take you really far in if you continue bodybuilding or not your career, all mm -hmm. the faith of life. And that's truly what bodybuilding should be. Yeah. Contributing to your life is so much more than just what you look like in the stage. It's yep. how is it contributing to all areas of your life? And I think that's mm -hmm. where you really leveled up. And we're we're just so proud of you. And we love who you are as a woman, as an athlete. And we hope you continue. We And I'm glad to hear you had a great experience. I know that if you continue, you're going to go very, very far. But mm -hmm. no matter what, I mean, you should be so proud of yourself and the, the package you, you gave to both shows. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so cute. We all need to do like a big group hug. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so um, I think that's actually a really good place to kind of wind it down. Um, any last words that, that Addie you'd like to give or Drew you'd like to give to our listeners before we, before we log off for episode 39? I feel like I said everything that I wanted to, I think. Now go kick some ass, right? <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Seriously, Addy, you know, um, from, you know, when your mom had reached out to Jordan, you know, originally about, you know, inquiring about coaching and then consulting with you and having your mom on the consultation call, I think was really cool just to have that really open communication is, is super important and her feeling comfortable enough to like be able to reach out to me a couple of weeks ago and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I just thank you. You know, you're, you're, you're a dream athlete to coach, coach any day. Um, any day of the, of the year and um, I look forward to what, what we can accomplish together. So love it. Love it. All right. That is a beautiful place to stop. So guys, thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this, this perspective from a newbie competitor. Cause I know there's a lot of you guys that listen to us that, that are just starting out in the sport. Um, we're going to log out for episode 39, but before we do that, like comment, subscribe, all the fun things, all the buttons, wherever the buttons are. <laughs> That's our, that's our cover for the, for the, for the thumbnail. <laughs> and uh, episode 39, we are out. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.